the bison, a bovine that stands more than six feet or two meters at the shoulder, weighs up to 2,000 pounds or 900 kilograms, and can charge at 45 miles per hour. It is an iconic species on North America's Great Plains and amongst European woodlands and mountains. But despite spanning continents, bison aren't found in Africa. So what happened? Why did Africa, of all places, never get its own bison? There was something special about seeing these impressive beasts in the wild, in their native habitat. It can feel like you're stepping back in time when spotting a bison grazing grass in Yellowstone or Bioviasia. There is a sense of wonder and wildness lost elsewhere. Humans and bisons have had a shared history. Our ancestors once relied on these animals for their clothing, food, and tools. Their imposing presence made a deep impression on our ancestors who adorned their abodes with ancient artwork depicting the bison they admired and hunted for centuries. They were a big part of our culture and in some parts of the world, they still hold important cultural and spiritual symbolism. But today, most of us live far removed from the wilds our ancestors knew, and that deep connection with nature and animals like the bison has largely faded. Bison once roamed in their millions, grazing the open grasslands and following seasonal migration patterns over thousands of miles every year. They played a crucial role in the ecosystem, something that has been lost today not only to habitat destruction and human encroachment, but restrictions to their movements and dwindling numbers. Not only did bison once influence the vegetation across large swaths of North America and Europe, but they provided food for the hungry predators of the time including bears, wolves, and tigers, where their habitats overlapped. Before the 1870s, the American bison population was 60 million strong. But fast forward just 10 years, and mass hunting almost brought the species to extinction. Their European relatives fared no better and were hunted to complete extinction in the wild by the early 20th century. But bison aren't a weak species. They have stood the test of time despite the evolving climate and the modern pressures of mankind. They belong to the bovid family, a group of animals that also includes cattle, buffalo, antelope, sheep, and goats. 20 million years ago during the Miocene, the bovid splits into two main clades one of African origin and the other of European origin. Those that diversified and evolved in Africa became the bovids of the continent we know today, such as the African buffalo, wildebeest, and the huge variety of antelopes. Today, Africa has the greatest diversity of bovids in the world. The bovids in Europe diversified into multiple species that adapted to the climate further north. One of those species was the bison, which first appeared in Asia around 2.6 million years ago. It was the early Pleistocene, an age that was characterized in Eurasia by repeating patterns of glacial and interglacial cycles, a time when massive ice sheets covered the north and a cold, bleak, and dry mammoth steppe dominated elsewhere. The landscape would have become home to formidable saber-toothed cats, the impressive woolly mammoths and woolly rhinoceros, as well as the domineering cave bears and cave hyenas. It was a time when megafauna ruled the world. And it was also a time of massive change, shifting ecological niches and patterns, and migrating species reaching far and wide. The bison were well adapted for this harsh existence. They are built for the cold. Their thick, long, shaggy coats insulate them from the freezing cold. Their enormous heads and muscular shoulders help plow through the snow in search for vegetation, and their slow metabolism allows them to endure the harshest of winters when food is scarce and energy conservation is key to survival. At least three populations or subspecies of European bison were known to have existed during the Pleistocene. These were the steppe bison, European bison, and Pleistocene woodland bison. But it was the steppe bison that made North America its home. With drastically retracted seas, Eurasia was joined to the North American continent via Beringia, a land bridge that today is submerged beneath the waves. The steppe bison migrated from Russia into North America and spread throughout the continent. It was a process that took tens of thousands of years, a blink of an eye in evolutionary terms, but still a very slow process. The first bison to step foot onto American soil did so 195,000 years ago. This was the first wave of migration, 
A second wave took place between 45,000 and 21,000 years ago, and they never looked back. Why aren't there any bison in Africa? Although bison are distantly related to the bovids found in Africa, there was never a migration of them into Africa from Eurasia. By the time the species had established itself in Eurasia, there were physical, geographical, and climatic barriers preventing them from migrating southwards into Africa. And Africa already had its version of the bison. Herds of wildebeest numbering in their millions migrated across the continent in new grazing grounds, following the rains and the promise of better pasture. The barriers preventing an influx of European species into Africa included the Sahara Desert and the Arabian Peninsula, both inhospitable places, particularly for bison. During the Pleistocene, the Arabian Peninsula fluctuated between periods of aridity and wetter conditions. Even during the wetter times when greenery emerged and spread throughout the landscape, bison would have struggled to cross the peninsula to enter Africa. The temperature often exceeded 40 degrees Celsius, or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. It was the last place an animal with thick fur, a large body size, and insulating fat would want to be. They would have struggled to find enough food and water to sustain them, and would have overheated in those conditions. Their inability to cope in arid conditions would make them easy prey for the likes of lions, hyenas, and leopards. Water sources were only temporary, and rainfall erratic and unpredictable. The continuous grasslands that bison thrive on were non-existent on the Arabian Peninsula. Instead, the grazing grounds were small and fragmented, much more suited to heat-tolerant grazers, like gazelles, rather than large, hefty bison. In fact, it is known that some African species, like early humans, elephants, and lions, migrated out of Africa and into Europe via the Arabian Peninsula. But these species were adapted to arid climates. They were used to the harsh conditions the peninsula offered and were able to cross the barrier in search for a better environment without dying in the process. Even if somehow a small population of bison had made the arduous journey onto the peninsula, they would have faced stiff competition from well-adapted native bovids like oryx, ibex, and gazelles. These species can survive drought conditions. Their kidneys produce concentrated urine to preserve water. Their body temperatures can rise significantly to prevent sweating, and they have light-colored coats to reflect the burning sun. The same can be said for many of Africa's bovids. They are built for the heat, while bison were built for the cold. But what about the bison's migration into North America? Surely there were bovids already occupying the niche that bison were entering. Surely they would have fierce competition in America too. Well, not exactly. At the time, North America had no true bovids. Bison were about to change that, but America did have a number of grazers. These included horses, camels, pronghorns, and mammoths. When the Eurasian bison trampled their way from Siberia across Beringia and into North America, they weren't in direct competition with the native grazers. There was an empty ecological niche that they stepped right into, and far fewer grazers than there would have been in Africa. It would have been a sight to behold. The first bison arriving in North America would have walked the landscape along the likes of mastodons and giant ground sloths. These megafauna were generally browsers, eating a variety of plant material from bark and twigs to leaves and fruit. So, despite their size and herbivorous diets, they wouldn't have been in direct competition with the incoming bison. The climatic conditions of North America lent themselves to the success of the bison herds, and the vast open grasslands provided plentiful nutritious food, allowing the bison to thrive. In time, they became the dominant herbivores of the Ice Age, particularly in North America. And when other species died off, such as the impressive mammoths and mastodons, the bison continued to thrive. They spread out far and wide, migrating southwards and eastwards, taking advantage of the lush vegetation on offer they eventually evolved into new species, the giant or the long-horned bison and bison antiquus, the latter being the direct ancestor of today's American bison. The success of the bison changed America forever. Their large numbers and herding patterns reshaped grasslands. They created an entirely new ecosystem, one in which ground-nesting birds and pronghorn could thrive in the grasslands. The flora and fauna became intertwined with the movements of the bison, they are known as a keystone species, a species that has a significant effect on its environment, holding an entire ecosystem together.
So, bison originated in Europe, migrated across Asia, and finally made it across the Bering Land Bridge into North America. There was no reason for them to move eastwards and southwards into Africa. There was no reward for migrating across challenging terrain and into warmer climates. Africa's sweeping savannas teemed with nimble antelopes, muscular buffalo, and countless grazers already fine-tuned to withstand heat and drought. The bison's dense coat, slow metabolism, and snow-plowing build, perfect for the steppes, would have been a burden under the equatorial sun. Evolution favors those who fit their environment, and in Africa, the bison simply didn't belong. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.